Fragmentation occurs under very high energy conditions, so species that would normally be out of reach in organic reactions occurring under, for example, laboratory conditions can form in fragmentation reactions. We're going to think about fragmentation using two different paradigms, two different distinct classes. In the first class, fragmentation produces a radical and a cation. The radical is a neutral species, R prime dot here, and the cation is a positively charged species. As an example of how this might occur, consider a molecular ion in which the radical and cationic character are located on the same atom. Say, for example, ionization knocked an electron out of a non-bonding lone pair orbital. Cleavage of the bond between R and R prime heterolytically so that R plus gets both of the electrons leads to a situation where R is now a neutral radical since it gained an electron formally but it still has an unpaired electron and R prime is cationic since it lost an electron formally but it has an even number of electrons so it's not a radical. This type of fragmentation is common in alkyl chains and it kicks off neutral alkyl radicals like the methyl radical and the ethyl radical which aren't picked up directly by the detector but it also gives rise to alkyl type cations the charged or cationic fragments left behind after these radicals have departed. We've actually seen an example of this in the last video. If you go back and revisit the last video, you'll notice that the M-29 molecular ion peak that we identified in the N-propanol mass spectrum corresponds to the loss of an ethyl radical, which has a mass of 29 grams per mole. Fragmentation is often driven by the formation of more stable species than the original molecular ion. And in the case of ionized carbonyl groups, this is absolutely an important effect. In a process known as alpha cleavage, the radical electron on oxygen combines with one of the electrons in a bond between the carbonyl carbon and the group it's attached to, let's say it's a carbon, to form a new triple bond. And here the half-headed arrows indicate the movement of a single electron. The electron left behind in the carbon-carbon bond becomes part of a radical fragment that we again don't observe directly, but can be observed as a difference between fragment peaks within the mass spectrum. The fragment that's actually detected now has a carbon-oxygen triple bond and a formal positive charge on oxygen. And since the fragment that broke off is alpha-2, or directly connected to the carbonyl group, this is known as alpha cleavage. Alpha cleavage is driven by the fact that this fragment that's actually detected, the cation, is resonance stabilized. So we're going from certainly a less stable to a more stable situation. Ionized heteroatoms with only single bonds can also engage in this kind of reactivity. With one electron from the ionized heteroatom combining with one electron from a sigma bond two bonds away, giving off a radical fragment, here again it's the ethyl radical, CH2CH3, and leaving behind a cation containing a new pi bond. Nitrogen is formally positive, but is no longer a radical now, since the radical character was sloughed off onto the ethyl radical. We might describe this as beta cleavage, since from the perspective of the ionized heteroatom, the atom that actually gets cleaved off as the radical fragment is in the beta position relative to the ionized heteroatom. The second type or class of fragmentation involves the formation of a new radical cation and a neutral fragment that we don't observe directly, but that we can infer as a difference between peaks. Elimination type reactions are often responsible for this kind of fragmentation. For example, the radical cation portion of the starting molecular ion can abstract a hydrogen from another atom in the molecule, leaving R prime with radical character and take with it a pair of electrons such that the resulting RH species is completely neutral. This leaves R prime with both cationic and radical character. And this doesn't have to occur like this over only three atoms. It may take place over several atoms, as we'll see. The 18 grams per mole that we associated with a neutral fragment in the previous video is due to water, which has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. And this type of elimination of water is common to alcohols and other functional groups containing hydroxyls. The oxygen's radical electron abstracts a hydrogen from a carbon or other atom that's beta to the oxygen, and at the same time accepts a pair of electrons 
from the carbon-oxygen bond. Water is then given off, and the resulting charged fragment has radical character where the hydrogen was abstracted, and a positive charge on the carbon where the hydroxyl group departed. And just as an aside, what this looks like is the ionization product of an alkene, where an electron is lost from the carbon-carbon pi bond in the alkene. Carbonyl groups can also engage in this kind of elimination type behavior, with the result being elimination of an alkene, which is unreasonable generally, but can occur under the high energy conditions of mass spectrometry. What happens here is a fragmentation spread out over several atoms that's driven by abstraction of a hydrogen from a position that's gamma to the carbonyl carbon, alpha, beta, gamma. A cascade of single electron flows results in the formation of an alkene, or carbon-carbon double bond here, and a new radical cation incorporating the alpha carbon, the carbonyl, and whatever else is in the molecule on the other side of the carbonyl group. The alkene is a neutral fragment that we don't detect directly, but we can see as a difference between peaks, and the new radical cation, as we've drawn it here, has radical character on one of the alpha carbons, and cationic character at the oxygen, although there are multiple resonance forms that we can draw for this molecule. This type of rearrangement is common enough in carbonyl compounds with long alkyl fragments that it's been given a name. It's called the McLafferty rearrangement.